Hi everyone, welcome back. You're in my kitchen tonight. Um, this is the day 15 video of my coronavirus dis quarantine distraction videos. That's a mouthful to say. Um, I'm making a series of videos trying to do one a day while I'm um, uh, out uh, from school and I'm doing the online learning with my students and because my kids don't have clay I'm trying to give them some enrichment experiences and one of the things that I'm doing is I'm doing a video every day during a quarantine just as a little distraction from what's going on to help keep them thinking about clay maybe doing demos but in the case of today I was kind of running out of time I haven't got my video together and it's already after 11 o'clock at night so I thought what can I do that's kind of quick and I can still get it done and I thought you know what I have a ton of pottery that we use stuff that's in my cabinets so I thought I would pull some out of my cabinets share that with you so you could see what what do I have in my cabinets why do I like these things um, you know maybe how I've been collecting things over the years and um, I'll show you some of mine that I have in the cabinets too so let's get started and I'll show you. Okay, so I put out some of my favorite pots by other people here on my kitchen counter. Um, in some cases I know who did them, in some cases I don't. Um, this is a bowl that I picked up at our local Empty Bowls event a couple of years ago. I'm not too sure who did this. Uh, the mark on the bottom was a little difficult for me to make out, but it's such a charming little bowl with just some slashes of black underglaze and the red underglaze and then it's clear glazed. I just think it's lovely. And I love that that um, deep uh, form, how it narrows at the bottom. What's funny is my one daughter and I, we, we usually um, kind of uh, have divs on who gets that bowl. We really like that one a lot. This uh, one right here, also picked up at Empty Bowls, you can see it has a lovely little, like a, a honeycomb and bee decal. It's super, it's super cute. The glaze is a little bit, um, it's probably a brush glaze, so it's a little bit on, uh, slightly uneven, but it's, it's very, very cute. And that's got a signature right there. I'm not too sure what that's saying. Okay. Um, this one, I love this one. This one is such a pretty little, Glaze. I'm not too sure where I got this. I can't remember if I picked it up at an empty bowls or if I picked it up in a gallery. But I do really enjoy the glaze on this. I enjoy the form of the rim. Kind of like a teacup uh, shape. I love the, um, the, uh, the foot that has been notched. So it has uh, you know four separate little feet. I just think that one's a charming one. Okay, next. I love, love, love this one. Okay, let me turn it around, right? Okay, so this one, I know I picked it up at Summer Fair, which is a big um, uh, art event in uh, Cincinnati down on the river um, every summer. And I, unfortunately, I, oops, sorry, I jostled the camera. I've got a little chip right there, but I still love it. Um, I've had this for, gosh, probably, you know, 23 years or something like that. I think it's really lovely. And I believe, let me see if I can flip this over. I believe it says Niehaus on it, maybe. Maybe CJ Niehaus. But that was, oh, in 98. There we go. So 22 years. Um, this one, I know it was done with a Cone 6 uh, stoneware, I believe. And I think it's underglazes that she used on that. I just think it's charming. I really like her her painterly, her image uh, that she put in there. That's not something that I typically do myself, so I really uh, appreciate that with other people. This is a, a fun little bowl I got from one of my clay buddies, who is uh, Robert Young. He's a teacher out in the Southwest, and he sent that to me, and I sent him one. We had a pottery exchange. This one, I love this one. Okay, so this one is Healy, and I think it says SG Healy. And uh, she is um, a local ceramics uh, person. Gosh, this is probably well over 20 years old. I, I got this uh, years ago. Um, I'm fairly certain it was made from a slab draped over a mold, but I just, I love the charming little legs and the handles and everything. Um, and we, it's funny because our kids call that it's either the asparagus bowl or the scrambled egg bowl because that's what we always put in it. Um, this one I just adore. I love dogs. We don't have a dog and I love a dog, but 
this uh, Labrador and it's Scrofito. It looks like white stoneware. We've got the birds. And I cannot make out the name on this one. I don't know if you can, I'm not even too sure which way it goes. So, but it's, it's lovely. And I, I like the splash of green on that too. Um, these two, I'll talk about these at the same time. They have a, a maker's mark that is, is an R with a backward R. This is going to be someone local here as well because these um, I picked up at Empty Bowls. I just, I loved both of the glazes. I thought they were really fun. And I'm not too sure, but I'm assuming it was probably maybe a stamped, um, uh, like glaze design in there. Oh, and I'll just point out my Sequoia, my Toyota Sequoia and my camper. Um, I made these several years ago. It has a hitch and everything. That's our salt and pepper that we use. Um, I did it as a demo for our uh, shaker project we do in level two. Um, this one I believe is a Mark Campbell. Okay. And I just, I just think the glaze is so pretty on this. Love that one. Uh, this one, I am like 90% sure this is a Kevin Tunstall and he may have had a collaboration with an, with another artist, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I just love that design. Love that glaze. I've got another piece that I'll show you guys another time by him that it's a little vase. This one, it, I've had this for well over 20 years and I, I'm not exactly sure what it says. Okay but I swear it is the lightest bowl I have ever picked up. I mean, it's like so thin and I can't believe I've never chipped it or anything like that. It's just beautiful though. I love the carving. It's, uh, it's, it's a really fun, fun piece. This one, one of my kids picked up at Empty Bowls a couple years ago. I thought the fish were cute. It's got a nice little scalloped edge and I'm not too sure what that says. Casey, no, Clooney? I don't know. Oh, me, Clancy. C L A N. Yeah, Clancy. Sorry. Okay, now these, these are not actually um, like what we would think of as a typical artist made. I'm sure these were more of a factory made bowl, but I love them. Um, this one is getting a little bit chipped on the rim, as you can see there. Um, I'm pretty sure these are like a low fire white. Um, earthenware kind of clay body, but these were made in Turkey and I'm sure they were made for the tourist trade. But um, I had a girlfriend who visited Turkey and she brought me those back. And there's one more, I'm not too sure where it went, but um, it's around here someplace. Okay, well, let's talk about this one. Uh, this is Trish McLennan. She has Garden House Pottery, which is a beautiful little pottery right here in Mainville. It's probably only, I don't know, 10 miles away from me. Um, she makes her own little decals. So this says she had the soul of a gypsy, the heart of a hippie, and the spirit of a fairy. And she puts this little compass rose, if you can see in there. See, she's got a little compass rose decal that she put in there. But her stuff is just so pretty, clever, and witty. Um, this blue one, let's see, I'm not too sure who that one is. There's a little maker's mark. This one um, we picked up at Empty Bowls uh, probably a few years ago. It's just a lovely classic blue bowl, um, you know, with that denim glaze. This one is a Mike and Karen Baum bowl. Um, so the Baums are local potters here. They um, are in the Lebanon area, um, at, which is where I live, and they just do gorgeous. Mike is just such a skilled master thrower um, and beautiful color combinations. I'll put links, by the way, to the different studios that I know of um, so you guys can, you know, check out some of their pottery if you want. All right, now let me go to my next batch. Okay, so for these next pots, these are ones that I've done and I just wanted to show you um, some of the ones that um, I've been fond of for different reasons. So this one is one that I did. This is Coyote Shino with Coyote Gunmetal. Now, I don't normally use gunmetal straight up like this um, because sometimes I have a problem with shivering. This one came out beautifully though. I had no problems whatsoever. Um, this one, I really love this uh, combo. This is Coyote Espresso Bean and Gunmetal on the Rim. And just like 
uh, gunmetal is known for when you put it over something, it will run. So when I put it on the rim, I probably only put it like maybe an inch down and it ran like that. Um, this one, I really like the, the deep uh, kind of narrow form. So this is Coyote, uh, like the white gloss, orange in the middle, and then on the rim, I believe that is Archie Space. Um, this is one of my Scraffito pots. I know I've mentioned it before, but I love doing um, six pointed geometric things. I love snowflakes, so that is one of my bowls that um, I just do it freehand. Um, I've never done a video on, on doing that, maybe someday. Um, this is just a classic little little blue bowl. I always like that. Uh, this was, I think this was Blue Monday, which was... I forget who made that. I'll, t I'll, I'll put it in the video description if I can think of it. Um, this one was one of my daughter's favorite bowls. She always liked this. So that's Coyote Lapis on the bottom, blue purple on the inside, and blue purple on the rim. And there, I must have had, I don't know, maybe I didn't have Lapis going all the way up there. Typically I put something else um, underneath blue purple. I may have lucked out on that one though. Or, or maybe it does have a little bit of a layer of lapis there. Um, this one was, let's see, gosh, that might be crazed copper. I don't know. I can't remember. One thing I liked about this, and I'm going to try to do this without showing you my messy counters, is when you go thin enough, it becomes translucent in some of the areas. So there we go. That's kind of fun. Okay. And then... This one is Coyote Blue Chino on the exterior. Uh, that's Laguna Frost Matte. Fro I think it's called Frost Matte on the interior. I, I, I think that's a real pretty, pretty matte color with nice crystal formations. Um, this one, I like the I like the texture on this. Root beer, I'm, I'm just crazy about coyote root beer. So root beer often has some bluish hues to it. Okay, that is coyote root beer. And I, I do like the form on that one. It, it holds, that's, that's a really nice soup bowl, I like that one. This one is just kind of a fun, it's almost like a, it's almost comes to a point in there. This one, I flipped the rim inward. So this was like a hollow rim. Um, and as long as you dry slow, slowly, you shouldn't have trouble with it, you know, uh, blowing up or anything. This one, I did some slip trailing on it, so you can see it's got, like, uh, little bumps and a pattern there. And this one had, I think it was just a compressed rim. I don't think I rolled it. So this was Coyote Black with Coyote Desert Sage on top of it. And it looks like I dipped the rim in uh, probably Gunmetal or Archie's base. I'm not 100% sure which one of those. Let's see, next one. This is Coyote Orange. The rim was in Coyote Red. Inside was orange. And then um, I did an extra layer on the top of Archie's base. Okay. Next one. This is um, uh, Coyote. Hold on. The, uh, it's the <laughs> oxblood, oxblood. I couldn't think of the name of it. And this one actually came out really, really well. I like the way that the, the oxblood, uh, where it's thicker, it goes red. Where it's thinner, it goes with a clearish, almost has a greenish hue to it, if you can see that. Okay. This one is like one that I just uh, came out of the kiln in the video that I posted last week. This one is... Um, again, Coyote Black, Desert Sage, Gunmetal on the Rim. That's one of my favorite combinations, so I often repeat that one. This one did come out of the kiln last week, and I just love the crystal formation on this. Um, and I have a, another video. This one, I had a little, little bit of crawling right there, but I don't really object to it. So this is Coyote Chino over Coyote uh, Steel Gray Chino. So I did the Steel Gray Chino to here, let it dry, and did the Chino to here. Okay. And then where it uh, had the double layer, it just had some super cool crystal formation, really beautiful matte texture. And then the last one that I have was made by my daughter, Molly, when she was in eighth grade. <laughs> I thought
thought that was fun. So these are just some of my favorite bowls that I have in my cabinets. And again, I don't, you know, have necessarily matching dishes that I've made for myself. I've made many sets for other people, but I haven't gotten around to that. We literally use for our everyday dishes, I'll show you. We literally use Corel every day. How embarrassing is that? I really need to change that around. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing a little glimpse into the cabinets that I have. Oh, and I didn't mention, but back there I have a little uh, crock that I have my silverware in. I'll, maybe I'll show another video on how I do those someday. Well, and thanks for joining me tonight in a trip through my cabinet tree, and it'll help me get it reorganized at least, if nothing else. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting. Mm -hmm.